Hello everyone. Yes, it's today is the 11th of November and I'm harvesting tomatoes and I can't quite believe this really. These are my side shoots from the Crimson Crush. I take them early in the season. I sow the seeds of my Crimson Crush plants, let them grow up as the side shoots come, take them off, grow them on and that's what all these are. With the idea of spreading the harvest. I never quite imagined I'd be spreading them quite this long. It doesn't normally happen for me here in Cumbria, but it's been that mild this year. These plants have just continued and we're still harvesting ripe tomatoes in the middle of November, which is fantastic. I have heard stories of somebody else in this plot who harvests them all the way up to Christmas. Don't know about that, but that's what I've been told. But anyway, I'm going to harvest these today and we can still see there's still a few that aren't quite ripe. I'm going to let them continue because we haven't had that many frosts this year. Normally here in Cumbria, you can guarantee as the word of the month changes to October, we start to get frosts, quite severe frosts and lots of them. And I think so far this, this season, we've had two frosts and they've only been really light frosts. It's one of those things where it's sort of maybe five or six o'clock in the morning, it's just got cold enough to start frosting then daylight has broke and killed that frost off. So they've only been very slight and they haven't been able to get in here to kill these plants off, which is normally what happens to me. Another strange thing that normally happens is I grow a variety of tomato called Ildi, and it's a small yellow tomato about this sort of size, like a cherry tomato. And it's very prolific from each truss, so from one of these here, from each one of these, you'll get anywhere between 60 and 80 little fruits. And normally, sort of into October, I cut the trusses off and hang them in the shed at home and they will continue to ripen near enough until Christmas. Uh, and they just keep going and keep ripening very, very slowly. But they were all finished in sort of August this year, which is unknown for me, but these carried on. So it's kind of a switcheroo effect. But anyway, I'm gonna harvest these. I'll leave the rest in. I don't need this bed at the moment, so just going to see how long this mild weather will take us and what I can get out of this, these plants. But this is brilliant, it means I can make a nice warm salad tonight with tomatoes, and a bit of balsamic vinegar, something like that, and just gently warm them up. That'd be lovely. <laughs> so there must be five pound of ripe tomatoes there, come straight off the vine, nice and fresh. And they're very welcome at this time of the year, middle of November, to get that is truly stunning. So anyway, I'm going to go and pick some other things. And I've got another oddity, I think, to show you in the, in the main tunnel in a few minutes. But first, we'll have a look at this carrot clamp. So this here, this big dome, is my carrot clamp. And this is a traditional way of storing carrots through the winter months. Normally, you would do this outside, straight on the bed where they come up from, and you just dig a shallow hole, probably five, six inches deep, big circular hole. You lay your carrots out on a bed of straw with the fat ends outwards and the thin ends into the middle, and you get a nice spiral effect. You do one layer, you keep the carrots from touching, another layer of straw on top, and then you put your next layer of carrots on and you build it up until you've got this dome effect and you've got all your carrots stored away. Then you cover it in soil as insulation. As I say, you normally do it outside, but our winters here are so cold and so wet that I found um, probably sort of three out of five years, they will rot for me outside. So I've tried it inside in the tunnel this year to see if I can get it to work in here. And I've got the opposite effect now. Because it's so mild, you can see this foliage, <laughs> the carrots are continuing to grow within the clamp itself and the foliage is coming out. So I'm gonna try and harvest them. I'm gonna see if I can just pull these out, the ones that are growing. And we'll eat these this weekend. So without dislodging the clamp itself just want to pull those carrots out that are continuing to grow <laughs> it's great it's like a lucky dip so we'll eat these this weekend 
and then the others that sort of poke their way through before they actually start digging into this clamp and taking the carrots as I should by the layers. There we go, so that hasn't affected the clamp too much and we've got a nice bunch of carrots for us to eat this weekend. But they can go in the, in the box. There we go, another couple there, maybe. <laughs> there we go, that'll do. <laughs> we'll go and have a look in the big tunnel now. I've got something to show you in there. Now, I used to be a chef many years ago and in my cooking at home now, 90% of the food that I cook I will never have cooked before because I will change it up some way. I will add a herb or a spice or another ingredient or prepare the ingredients in a slightly different way to change it up so that we're not eating the same thing the same way all the time. And that's how I've always done. But one thing, although my Catholic, my tastes are quite Catholic, one thing I've never really been able to get past is the heat from a chili. I'm led to believe, and I have tasted it now, I have tasted the fruitiness that are with chilies, but still I have this ongoing issue with the heat of the chili in the fact that it kills the flavours of the other food that it's with, for me. Now, I am slowly starting to get past that, so this year I've grown uh, a chili, and this is more like a chili shrub, to be honest. The base of this thing is about an inch and a half thick, the stem. And I grow a lot of sweet peppers as well. When I harvested my sweet peppers this year, I harvested a load of chilies off this and we've got some at home and we've eaten some. Uh, and we're trying them out in various methods and ways so that I can get used to them. But I'm also on the Potty Mouth Garden Club. You may have heard of that. Uh, we do a live cast every Monday night. It's myself, Tony Smith, Naturally JB and Real Food Comes Dirty. We're all on that every Monday night and we do this live chat. And JB on there is a bit of a chilli head and he likes them hot. I mean, I think he likes to pour hot lava down his throat. Otherwise he's not eaten. But he gave me a tip with these to leave these in, leave these plants in because I would have ripped this plant out when I ripped the rest of my sweet peppers out. I would have thought that was it done. Because I say I don't normally grow them. But he said, leave them in. And since then, I've had two more harvests of ripe chilies. And I've got a third here. This is absolutely smothered in ripe chilies. So I'm going to harvest these. And I know what he's done recently is he's, I think he's going to be harvesting his on the branch and leave them to ripen that way to keep them fresher. What I'm going to try and do is once I've harvested these, I will water and feed this plant. Now, the idea is I stopped watering this plant ages ago to stress it, to make it ripen what was on there. But it's such a strange phenomenon because little chilies like this are growing and these will have been green a couple of weeks ago or non-existent, but you can see that it's full of flower, this plant. So I'm just going to leave them and see what happens until basically the cold weather kills this plant off. Because that's the curious side of my nature. I really want to see where this goes and how far I can take it. But you can see I'm getting a good harvest off that and I'm only doing what I can reach here. There's tons more on here. So we'll leave this plant in and see how long it goes and what we get off it. I'll harvest the rest of these. <laughs> So I've got quite a collection there of mostly red. There's some that are just turning, but I'm happy to take them home as they are. Um, that's going to be more than enough for us, but I'm now going to continue to grow this on just to satisfy my own curiosity about what this plant does next, because it's another learning curve for me. And the idea with feeding and watering now is to feed them to hopefully tell the flowers all these fruits have come off, it's got no seed 
so hopefully it's going to start its reproduction cycle again and grow these flowers on into more chilies and then to ripen off what chilies are there when I starve it of water again in in, a, in another week or two's time so I'll water it today and feed it and water it today, um, again maybe in about a week's time and then I'll cut all the water off again and then just see what happens just because I'm curious <laughs> very curious but there we go <laughs> so I've got my chilies there if anyone's got any ideas, I mean, I'm obviously going to Google it and find out as well, but if anyone's got any ideas of the best way to store this so I can use them, preferably fresh, but that's irrelevant. If I ever need to pickle or preserve them in some way, that's fine. Just after some ideas of methods that you guys use, just let me know in the comments below. I'm quite happy with that little truck, taking it home, all those fresh tomatoes as well. But that's it for today. Please look after yourselves. I'm going to finish with coffee and then perhaps toddle off home myself. So take care, everyone. See you soon. Turn on now. <laughs>